also, you know, you have to be pretty flexible in this uh, lifestyle, and you you learn that there are a lot of things that are just hit hit and miss. Uh, you know, kind of pure luck. We were headed to Southern Colorado, going to stop in uh, and see a friend of mine in Salida, and the RV's been running uh, hotter than it should anytime we have a long climb or for, you know, anytime it's running at high power. So I made an appointment in Denver to have it have it fixed and and uh, or have it diagnosed, and then we had to make a separate appointment to actually have the work done. Um, and it was repaired, you know. <laughs> a couple grand later, it's good as new. But anyway, uh, you know, it was something that had needed to be done for quite a while, so I'm glad to have that out of the way. You don't want to let something that's actually fairly minor turn into something huge. But, uh, you know, you have to be flexible in this thing. And, I, you know, what I've discovered is that everything's kind of hit and miss, whether it's the campground that you're going to stay at or the city or area that, that the campground is in. Or, you know, sometimes you went on both, sometimes you get one or the other. So we ended up in uh, Brush, Colorado, while we waited a couple days for our appointment in Denver. Because fortunately, Cummins gives you a place to stay when you're there. So uh, we stayed in Brush for a few days, and it was really cool. They've got a, a nice, inexpensive, I think it was $10 a night campground with electric and water and a dump station. So we spent a few days there, did the laundry, resupplied in their town. So their investment in having an inexpensive place in a city park for us, you know, pays off to the merchants there. We we take advantage of those towns and their services. I, I watch the trains and I, I love the sounds, the different noises that you hear, you know, including the domino effect when they take the slack out of a out of a train. Anyway, so this little town, because it was inexpensive and fit our needs at the time, you know, it was a hit on, on both accounts. We uh, went to Denver then, had the RV worked on, and then we were planning on spending a couple days in the Colorado Springs area. So we just went from Denver uh, to Colorado Springs. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the RV park was kind of a miss, you know, but you try and get by inexpensively. We shoot for $20 a night or less on average, and, you know, you get into a city and it's more like uh, 50 to 80 or worse, you know, to get full hookups and that kind of thing, and there's very, very rarely is there a place that you can camp for free in, in any kind of major metropolitan area, you know, without without violating some law or something. Uh, but the area, of course, is fantastic. So we enjoyed our stay in uh, Colorado Springs. We went and, and visited the apartment we lived in uh, 42 years ago when my daughter was just a baby. Yeah, that's okay. good. I hear somebody crying. <laughs> 152C Colorado. Did you get it? So that that was that was fun, but the RV park, you know, for 50 bucks a night or whatever it was, it wasn't uh, it wasn't the greatest. Uh, but that's what you get for being for being cheap. But we went on down to Salida and uh, where my friend is, and uh, Dan has a radio show there called uh, Green Eggs and Dan on uh, their local uh, radio station in Salida. I forget the, uh, I'll put the, the call letters in the video, I've forgotten what they are, but uh, we had 
picked out a place along the Arkansas River that was BLM land. And I knew it wasn't going to be much of a campground because it was free, or it used to be free. And as it turns out, the state of Colorado has taken over the management of some of the BLM lands. And typically on Forest Service land, you pay about 10 bucks a night for a campsite with, with you know, for dry camping, no hookups or anything. Well, we get there and yeah, it's open. There's places for us to camp, but it's $18 a night for your campsite and $7 a night for your vehicle. And since we're older than dirt, we get half off of our federal camping fees. But because the state of Colorado has taken it over, you don't get any any discount. And so we're paying 25 bucks a night for absolutely no services. You have to even, you, they don't even have dumpsters there. And uh, so it was a mess on the campground. Can't recommend that at that price. If it had been 10 bucks or whatever, yeah, great. But, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a bad campground. So, but it had a great time. Salida, I never knew Salida was such a cool town because I'd never been to the downtown. Uh, and I didn't grab any pictures there, but it was great seeing my friend. It had been years since we'd seen each other. So we left today. So we had a miss on the campground, but a hit on Salida. So we left today. Uh, it's starting to snow, the weather's getting bad, but we decided to head on out anyway. And uh, I had seen a campground listed in Canyon City, and we were planning on maybe going further, but we decided we'd check this campground out. And it's incredible. It's got a view of, of Canyon City from way up above on a mountain, and it's got great cell service, satellite, and it's completely and totally free. So there you go. Sometimes you hit, sometimes you miss. Anyway, thanks for watching.